Hey guys, in this video, I'll walk you through how to use Serpa Dev and Clay together in order to build some custom Clay workflows without spending any Clay credits in the process. Now, specifically for those of you that may not be aware, Serpa Dev is basically a tool to perform Google searches and it can basically perform Google searches at scale. So the kind of data points that we will get otherwise manually, we can get at scale using Clay. So specifically, to put it into context, there are four things that you can expect to learn from this video. The first use case we'll talk about is how you can find the LinkedIn profile of a person just from knowing their full name. Now, secondly, we can also talk about how you can find the Crunchbase profile of a company just from their company website. So in other words, you will put in the company website and in return, you'll get the, the URL link of their Crunchbase page. Then thirdly, we'll talk about how you can find build with. Um, and specifically how you can find the technologies that a company uses in their website and how you can scrape those technologies. Once again, that will be done thanks to Serpa Dev. And then fourthly, there will be another cool use case, which will basically be to scrape local businesses, uh, specifically their Google Maps, using Serpa Dev once again. Now, I'll walk you through, first of all, the real basics. And the basics are you'll go for Serpa Dev. You can see that you get 2,500 free searches. So there is no reason not to try it out. I'm not affiliated with them, by the way. All you need to do is sign up as always. I'm going to just quickly log into my account here as well. So let me just do that quickly. And as soon as you sign in inside of the API key section and literally copy and paste your API. So what you will then do is inside of Clay, you will click on add enrichment. You will type in HTTP and uh, the HTTP API thing will come up. For context, if you're new to Clay, HTTP API is basically for any integrations that are non-native. So that uh, like where they don't have an existing integration already, you will click on browse templates. And over here, the top of the list, usually like you could be, you should be able to type in Serpa Dev. Um, and you can see over here, it's got Serpa Dev Google Scraping or Serpa Dev uh, for this specific API thing. Now, this basically helps you because you can just apply a random template and straight away it's already connect to, um, you know, to the Serpa Dev account. If you're new to this, you can literally just copy and paste uh, this specific thing. Let me just show you how. When you connect to Serpa Dev, you will need to click on add account here in the top right corner, and then you can just basically copy and paste the endpoint. And once again, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll link the guide down below the video. So you can basically copy and paste this step yourself. You'll basically copy and paste the endpoint. You'll, you will make sure you select post. You can select the body text to be this, and you will copy and paste the API key with this header and the content type to be application JSON. So at this moment in time, I already assumed that you already connected to Serpa Dev, and the next stage is basically doing that first cool thing that I mentioned, which is finding the LinkedIn profile of a person just from their full name. So the way we'll go about that is pretty straightforward. We'll just click on the HTTP API. Um, and once again, we can click on add enrichment and type in HTTP API. Um, at that moment in time, we will select the Serpa Dev connection that we just made. And we will basically just input the following thing. So if, the way we need to think about it is how would you find the LinkedIn profile of a person if you were going to Google it, right? So typically it will be full name includes um, full name and the source is linkedin.com. That, that's the way you would do it. So if I type this into Google now, my name will probably come up uh, or it's very likely to come up. So for this reason, I'm just going to run this one row and straight away, if I'm not wrong right now, it should be coming up with my LinkedIn profile in the Google search. If it gives you 200 as the result, that means that um, like the result has been populated correctly uh, through the API. And you can see if you click on organic, I bet you when I click on zero, it should come up with my LinkedIn profile over here. So here we are. And this is basically how you would go about finding the LinkedIn profile. So we just found the LinkedIn profile and then we can go later down the line and so on just to scrape that profile and do all of that fancy stuff as well. But in a nutshell, that's the first action. And if you wonder what to do next after you found the LinkedIn profile, I'll do a separate video on how to use Zenros to scrape those LinkedIn profiles. So stay tuned for that. Right, so over here, let me just put, uh, let me just put down that this is. So here, I just labeled it as find LinkedIn URL using full name. Once again, I'll give away the clay temp, uh, table below. If you're watching, it, it will be underneath the video. So let's move on to the next use case, which is how you would find the Crunchbase from a company website. So specifically, how you you would find the Crunchbase profile of a company from their company website. The way you will do this is pretty straightforward. All you need is a company domain for that. So let me just go and find a domain for a company. Here, I just went and fetched some random domain. And a lot of the time, the trouble that we will have with this is that we need to normalize the domain before we can find their crunch base. So the way we'll do that is we'll click on add column, we'll type in formula, and we'll say, get the domain from, and then we'll basically just select the input, which is the current domain, and they will basically just tidy up the domain for us. So let's try and do that. 
And you could see that the before was this messy output and now it's basically curacel.co. So get uh, the domain from company. Okay, let's do that. I was wrong. I need to say get the email domain from this company just so it's curacel.co. At that moment in time, output is correct. And fun fact for you, I bet you did not expect to learn this today, but to find the crunch base of any company, you basically just need to follow this structure. So all we're going to do is input this structure into Serpa Dev. So once again, we'll click on add enrichment. We'll type in HTTP API. We'll select that template. And by the way, you can, you can save those templates as well. Um, bonus points to you if you do that. And over here, we'll just change the query. So this, this query over here is the Google search that you want to perform, right? And in this case, we're basically going to change all of this structure to crunchbase.com slash, and then we'll input the domain that we just talked about there. So I hope that through this right now, it should find the company Crunchbase page. So we'll, once again, we'll click play here. And I expect this to fetch the Crunchbase profile of this specific company. So let's check if we click on 200 here, organic zero and voila. If we just go on and click on this link, we are indeed on the Crunchbase profile of this company. Now, as a next step afterwards, you can use Zenrose to scrape this company website and you can then figure out what technologies they're using, using built with, what technologies they're using, using Crunchbase, all of that fun stuff. As I mentioned, I'll do a separate video on this. Now, next up, we'll do something very similar, which is finding the built with from any company website. Once again, this is pretty straightforward, uh, but it would look magical when I show it to you now. So the way we'll go about it is we'll go back inside of the clay table and let's say we want to find. So once again, we'll click on add enrichment. We'll type in HTTP API. We'll select it to be the same, um, the same template that we used earlier. So we'll click on Serpa dev. Let's fill that in randomly. And the query here that we want to put in is basically just the same query more or less as last time, but instead we'll replace Crunchbase with built with. And for context, every built with website follows the same structure. So it will always be built with.com slash. And then over here, you'll be the, like the normalized email, uh, the, the normalized like email domain at the very end. So I hope once again, in this case, I'm just doing it the first time before recording this video. But logic tells me that this should come up and this should give us the exact built with profile of the company. So let's click on that organic zero and voila, we've got uh, the built with for Curacel, which let's see if that's the same one. Um, yeah, so I think it should be the same one, but either way, so like across a representative sample of companies, this would be the right Curacel website. Um, so. If you want to be double, uh, if you want to be like completely, completely correct here, you could maximize your chances and here say something like includes curacel.co, includes, oops, almost dropped the mic, insurance. So if we basically reperform this search right now, we're guaranteed to find the right built with because I just basically pinned it down to some of the keywords that the company is known for. And once again, you can probably go, or you can do something similar. And once again, here, we found the Curacel website, first of all, and then we somewhere, basically there will be a bill with somewhere, but essentially the first one that came up, that was the correct search. So I'm just going to save that very briefly. Text in the background, I've just done the, um, um, I've just tidied up the prompt. So now it gives us the right output. And once again, you can get this clay table straight after the video. Um, and then the fourth method, which this will probably be the most advanced method that I show you today. So stay tuned. We're going to scrape. Now, if you're looking to just scrape a couple of local businesses and you're not looking to scale it like crazy, I'll basically show you right now how you can go about that. And typically all you need is the category name of the business. So you would need the pest control service, for example, and you know that the city that you're looking at is London. And all you would then do is click on add enrichment, type in HTTP API, and you would basically input that as a query inside of SerpaDev. So all you basically need to do for that is just input a query. And the query here would basically be something like category, category in city. And you'll basically save and run the rows. And what you should see right now is that if you basically get ChatGP to generate a bunch of locations within London, and you can get ChatGPT to format it as a table. You can import it as a CSV file and it will perform 20 searches like this and it will then find you 
three places. Uh, so if this one found basically this first place, then this one found the second place, this found the third place, right? But typically, if you just do it based on like a specific location, so you do it based on like the state, if you are in the uh, in the US, or if it's like a specific uh, I don't know, district or something in, in London, then it will be able to basically find you each individual business. And you could then basically click on places and then you would use Zenrose to scrape this uh, Google location itself. But in the, in the meantime, this will basically just perform the search for you. And then after that, you can then have the ability to basically find the details about this each individual company. So then you can do a second HTTP API request for this specific company and to go and find their website and then to do all of that stuff. And in fact, let me just show you how you can do that. So in this case, let's say we want to find the name of this space. So this will be the title, uh, Pest Control East London, Pest Cure East London. And we can basically call it like, I don't know, Business One. Business Two. And once again, we'll basically go after them once again, and we'll do the same, same search using the, um, the same method. So instead now we'll just say business one and then includes, and then we'll say category. Well, actually it doesn't really matter. Like we can just literally search business one and it should come up with their website, which we should be able to find here. Oops. Let's see. Failed to pass body input one second. Ah, oh, we rescued this. So essentially, yeah, we have the links to this company's website straight away, and then we can go scrape their website using Clayton or do something like that. Now I realized this video shows you how to do like very low scale kind of Google Maps scraping, and I'll do a separate video diving into how to scrape Google Maps, because in fact, I think the best method is using our scraper. So this video alone hopefully just taught you a couple of ways that you can use SerpaDev. And once again, I can't stress this enough. There will be a guide down below with all the prompts, with all the step-by-steps and everything. So just download it down below and do comment down below what other things you find challenging inside of Clay. I've got a Clay course that I teach myself for people that go from beginner level to intermediate to advanced. So if you have any topic requests, let me know because the chances are the students there would struggle with similar topics as well. And I'll film a separate video on the YouTube channel. If you like this, just like this video, comment something random down below if you wanna see something similar. And of course, subscribe, because let's be real, how many people legitimately subscribe to someone that talks about Clay table building and all that stuff. So yeah, stay tuned. See you in the next video and thank you for watching and remember to grab the guide down below.